If you are an 80s or 90s kid, you may have heard about a country called Czechoslovakia as it existed until the early 90s. And we know that the Czech Republic, also known as Czechia and Slovakia, were the new countries after the dissolution and split of Czechoslovakia. But why did it split up? Why didn't they stay united? Before we discuss why Czechoslovakia split up, it's important to know how Czechoslovakia came to be. Historically, the lands that became part of Czechoslovakia were part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, which wasn't doing well during World War I. Nationalism further plagued the empire and threatened its dissolution, and many nationalists, such as Tomáš Masaryk, capitalized on this and created the Czechoslovak National Council, which aims for total Czechoslovak independence and recognition from the Allies. In May 1918, Czech and Slovak representatives signed the Pittsburgh Agreement, which formed the basis of the new Czechoslovakia. It importantly stated that Slovakia would have its own assembly and Slovaks would be seen as equals to the Czechs. Czechoslovakia eventually gained its independence, being a bastion of democracy in the middle of Europe. However, Czechoslovakia is not without its problems, as the more industrialized Czech lands were seen as clearly more dominant than the less developed Slovakia and Carpathian Ruthenia. And that power mainly comes to Prague, as Czechoslovakia is a unitary state. Problems only really began for Prague when its western neighbor is eyeing up Czechoslovakia and eventually they seized the predominantly German populated Sudetenland. Czechoslovakia was eventually dismembered when Germany occupied what was left of the Czech lands with little resistance, pushed Slovak politicians to declare independence, and allowed Hungarians to reclaim what they deem as rightfully Hungarian, including Carpathian Rutinia. The new Slovak state, being the first one in history actually, is a manifestation that Slovakia can be independent, albeit a German client state and governed by a far-right party. Although current Slovakia does not consider the wartime Slovak Republic as its legal predecessor. Czechoslovakia was restored after the defeat of the Axis, only to be turned into a Soviet satellite state. Up to this point, Czechoslovakia has been a unitary state, which caused some discontent in Slovakia. Alexander Dubček, himself a Slovak, attempted to reform the government, but the Warsaw Pact is not exactly fine with that. However, Czechoslovakia was still federalized, a federation of two equal fraternal nations, the Czech Socialist Republic and the Slovak Socialist Republic. But by the 1970s under Gustav Husak, most of the power was practically returned to Prague. During the communist period, nationalism has been suppressed, but it started to resurface again during the Velvet Revolution when mass demonstrations from dissidents caused the entire communist government to resign, and it allowed a transition to a democratic government. Václav Havel eventually became the first democratically elected president after the fall of communism. The new government settled on how the new Czechoslovakia would see itself in the future. And they couldn't. Why? Well, that's because they can't agree on many aspects as many Czechs and Slovaks have different versions of the new Czechoslovakia. Many Slovaks wanted more autonomy than the Czechs are willing to allow. But that doesn't mean all of them want outright independence as many people, Czechs and Slovaks, are still in favor of preserving a federal Czechoslovakia. 
they actually couldn't agree on what would be the formal name of the country as the Slovaks wanted to add a hyphen between Czecho and Slovakia to emphasize that Slovaks are really seen as equals, but the Czechs refused since that name had been used briefly after when the Third Reich absorbed Sudetenland. Instead, they compromised and came into an ingenious idea of naming their country as Czech and Slovak Federative Republic. The ultimate reason for the dissolution and split of Czechoslovakia is politics. In 1992, Václav Klaus of the Civic Democratic Party became the Czech Prime Minister and he demanded a tighter federation or dissolution. In the same year, Vladimir Mečiar of the Movement for a Democratic Slovakia became the Slovak Prime Minister and he preferred a looser confederation. The Czech and Slovak sides negotiated heavily but to no avail. In the end, they agreed to disagree, I mean dissolve Czechoslovakia. Funny enough, there was no official referendum on preserving Czechoslovakia or Slovak independence from the populace, but nevertheless, Czech Republic and Slovakia officially split up on January 1, 1993, which became known as the Velvet Divorce. In the end, the Velvet Divorce was mainly a consequence of incompatible demands from Czech and Slovak politicians who see little benefit in maintaining the federation since there was no referendum held in the population. But the running divisions between Czechs and Slovaks and the fact that Czechs were more influenced by the Germans and the Slovaks were more influenced by the Hungarians were factors in why their own identities shaped their politics that led to the dissolution of Czechoslovakia. Czechs and Slovaks have common roots, but they have developed separately under different influences for about a thousand years and it was only in the 20th century when the Czechoslovak Union came to be. The official state policy of Czechoslovakia before 1938 was that there was a common Czechoslovak nation, but it's pretty clear that Czechs and Slovaks have substantial differences that Czechoslovakism didn't become ingrained in Czech and Slovak identity. Despite the differences, Czechs and Slovaks today are seen as close brothers, having a similar language, culture, and vibe. Czechs, however, are generally more liberal and less religious, while Slovaks are generally more conservative and more religious. Even though there was no referendum on the status of Czechoslovakia, there wasn't really a strong backlash nor radical support for it, and Czechs and Slovaks just managed to get away with it. On one hand though, some Czechs are glad that Slovakia isn't their problem anymore, while some Slovaks are glad that Slovakia can finally pursue its own destiny. Many Czechs and Slovaks somehow regretted the divorce mainly because they don't have any say on the matter aside from Czech and Slovak politicians, but there wasn't a very strong push to revive Czechoslovakia either except for some who wish the return of Czechoslovakia. Unlike Yugoslavia, the Velvet Divorce was completely peaceful, mainly because there was no hostility between Czechs and Slovaks, unlike with Serbs and Croats and other groups in Yugoslavia, and the people and government strived for non-violent separation since they saw what happened to Yugoslavia and they have absolutely no desire to do that to their own people. You know, war is not cool. Oh, and I don't think full reunification is likely in the future because, to be frank, they are satisfied with themselves being neighbors and they are both in the EU anyway. But never say never. So yeah, that's how the dissolution of Czechoslovakia went and those are the reasons for dissolution. Today, Czech Republic and Slovakia continue to be close partners 
despite not being part of the same country anymore. And they will continue to be so in the future. Thank you for watching and please subscribe for more Country Neighbors. Maybe Czechoslovakia will save the day.